Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock, and I am an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. I'll be painting with a thirsty brush with only three colors. And I want to show you how I got a variety of colors out of three simple tubes of paint. These are from the Daniel Smith Essentials set, and I was very excited to be able to produce results like this from just three paints. And I'll show you how I did. I started off by stamping on some Arches rough watercolor paper with Distress Inks by Ranger. And this is going to allow some of that color to break down a little bit and disappear for the most part. I'm using weathered wood and bundled sage, I believe, for these. And here's the color chart that I made in a previous video that I'll link you to at the end. There are color names at the top, I just apparently didn't move the camera enough to see them. But I can look on this grid and see which colors mix to make each one of those shades of purples, blues, oranges, and greens, etc. The amount of color is also indicated on here, so I can tell whether a purple is made by adding more blue or less blue than the red. And here with the green, I want this green, so I'm going to mix a couple shades of green based on Hansa Yellow Light and some Ultramarine Blue. So these are two of the colors that are in that six essential set. I started off by just putting a little bit of the blue into the Hansa Yellow Light and I realized I wanted an even lighter color. So I just made another pool of color so I could mix a lighter version of it and leave the other part for later in the leaves. I'm just painting straight over top of this Distress Ink to color the highlight portions of the leaves and then I'll use the mid-tone to color the bottom section. I want the leaves to pretty much disappear. I want the flowers to be the highlight in the painting and on the card, but I wanted to get some color in here and a little bit of depth. I'll add a little more detail to them at the very, very end. But I'm just going to throw the color in here and let it sit there while I paint the flowers. But I realized also there are stems in here. I didn't find all of them at this time, so I will jump in later and go back and do some stems. So I'm leaving all that paint there so I can go back and add it later on but I just mixed another kind of green using more blue. And you can get an infinite variety by the amounts of each color that you add. Next, I'll be mixing the beautiful Quinacridone Rose color along with some of that same French ultramarine blue that I just used with the green and making two different kinds of purples. One is gonna be more heavily blue, the other will be more heavily red. You can have a piece of scratch paper off to the side and test all your colors, but on a flower like a hydrangea, the variety of purples that are within one little bunch of flowers is huge. And I'm just going to be playing around with how to move the color and how to blend the color. Do I want some of it to be real washy and others to be a little on the, I guess, more dry brush side? And as I worked through just playing around with letting the watercolor do its own thing, I would just make a little pool of a very watery color and drop in another color into it. Drop in a little more of the bluish purple into the pinkish and just see what happens. This stamp is perfect for that kind of practice because the flowers are very forgiving. They're just a whole bunch of blossoms and it's real easy to do. In between all of this that I'm doing, I have a paper towel off to the side and I'm wiping the brush Sometimes I leave a little moisture in it so it's a damp brush and the dampness is what's pulling a little bit of that color around so it's very pale. There are other times when I pull out even more water up out of it and I start pulling that color around and I get a very dry brush look because I'm not pushing more water around. If you have more water loaded in, it's going to make it a softer blend that's going to it's going to move the color more. And I like the hard edges that I'm getting at, as I start creating this. So throughout all of this, I just started using that drier brush. And this is called a thirsty brush technique because what it's doing is absorbing some of that extra paint. If you have pools of paint, if you've mixed up a color that's too watery and you just have too much of it on there, empty your brush of color and water and squeeze it all out on your paper towel and then just lay it down and let it suck the color back out. You can do it with a paper towel, but sometimes you get a really interesting effect using the brush to pull that color out instead of trying to dab it in some way. Because you can dab it out of just one little tiny corner 
if you target it with your brush. The brush I'm using is a silver brush from their Black Velvet line, which is my favorite. And one of the things that's really nice is even though I'm using a big fat brush, this is a number eight, I'm also getting a lot of detail. You can see how small of a line I can get because it has a real nice point to it. And I'm speeding up the painting because there's going to be a lot of this same type of flower painting going on, but I'll chat a little bit more with you as I go along here. When you're buying brushes, one of the important things that, that you need to look for is, will it hold enough paint and water in it? And there are some brushes that literally, you know, as soon as you get your paint in them and try them, it just, it's almost like they're dry immediately once you put that, that color out there. But here with this brush, it allows it to continue to put out a little color and a little water because it's got a really nice body to it. It also has a very nice fine point. And there are a lot of brushes that don't necessarily get to a fine point like this. Now here I found my spot where I, all those little stems are inside of the flower, so I stopped to mix a little bit of that green. And when you are mixing your colors, you can leave them on your palette and you can re-wet anything and reuse that color again so I can get that same green that I had before just by picking it up on the palette. Now throughout this, I didn't mix up a ton of purple. I'm just mixing up a little at a time to see how much I need because I tend to wash my palette entirely when I'm done with my painting unless I'm gonna paint something else that's gonna have those colors right away. But in general, I, I just, I have in this weird habit, I know there are a lot of artists who love to have all that color sitting on their palette, but I like clean places so I can choose what colors are gonna be on there rather than, okay, yesterday I painted with green, so now everything I paint is gonna have a green tinge to it. So I'm a little crazy that way. But here I'm, I mixed up a color that wasn't quite the same purple, but what I'm doing is taking that thirsty brush and pushing some of that color from the shadow across each petal. And I'm leaving white space because the white space is what's going to make it have that real watercolor feel because it almost, it, it sort of makes the flower start to sparkle, I guess <laughs> you might say. And it doesn't matter that the purple is a little different. It's a little more red, so this bottom flower is a little more on the heavy red side. I'm just alternating my flowers, so some of them I'll pull from the blue pile of paint, and some I pull from the red, and alternate them back and forth. And just by the way I'm laying my brush down, I'm sort of laying it on its side, so that I get those funky little edges that you get from watercoloring this way. So let's speed through the rest of this and you can watch the flower develop. And you can also see that some of that rich color that we had on the left hand side is starting to dry, so it's lightening. For the most part, all watercolor is going to lighten. There's very few, <clears throat> excuse me, that are going to stay exactly the color that you put them down. So if you want something to be richer, you can either mix a richer color to start with, and I would test it out on a piece of paper to make sure it's the color that you want, and let it dry fully so you can see what it's going to dry like, or just go back over it with some layers at the end and do a little glazing with a deeper color. So at the very end of this, I'm gonna add more deep shadows because I started seeing how much it was softening and that there were some areas that had nice rich contrast and others that didn't. But with watercolor, you can always go back in and add a little bit more later on. And you can also lift off some colors. There's lots of different ways that you can sort of modulate the color after you're finished with the first layer, the first glaze of paint. So just about finished with this. And I was debating whether or not I wanted background around it or whether I just wanted to leave these colors against this fresh white background. And the more I looked at it, the more I just was thinking in my brain, look at that beautiful blue that's on my palette. Just look at that. What would happen if I tried to do a blue background? Now I have tried large areas of solid colors before. I haven't tried it, I don't think, on arches. And if I have, then I didn't have success at it because I know I've tried this a few times and it was not the best move. But I decided to try it with this and it, for the most part, came out okay. And I'll give you a few tips if you're trying this, but it's not for the faint at heart. 
Um, I watched a video from Anna Mason and she has an online watercolor school and it is fabulous. She is amazing. And she's the one that put a video up that taught me this and I was just absolutely blown away. I'll link you to it at the end of this video. And she talked about how to keep the edges wet. So with watercolor, as soon as you let one edge dry, it's going to have a little hard edge there. You want to keep working it and keep that edge, the leading edge wet, which means you're kind of working in multiple places at the same time. I stopped the blue. I didn't finish that one side over on the, the far left end as you're looking at it now because I wanted to continue keeping this other area wet. That little section I can fill in later. So I'm trying to just push the paint around and keep my brush moving quickly enough and keep all of those edges wet at the same time. So you can see me working on all different directions at once. It may be easier to try to find something where you have the background painted in between some more spaces where there's things like these leaves to break it up. I, I'm not sure what possessed me to try this, but it was difficult and it came out really beautiful, but it was challenging to try to get this whole background to look pretty much the same. There's a few spots that were a little darker, but it did set off these flowers nicely and I was able to make them pop a little bit more because the only white in the painting now is the white on those flowers. But I realized I had to go over with a second coat because part of the blue had been darker, this top section was lighter, so I put on another glaze of the blue to try to even it all out. <laughs> and this is one of those things you could noodle with forever and drive yourself crazy with, so it's not for the faint at heart, but I think the effect is still quite beautiful. So now I'm going to add a little bit more detail to the rest of the painting. These are the leaves, so I went in with that a little bit darker of the green, so I mixed a slightly darker green out of the same colors, and I'm just adding a little detail on the lower side of the leaves, because that's going to give them a little depth, but not so much that I end up with all the focus going to them. The focus is still going to be on my flowers. And add this down to the bottom section as well. And I'm just using really simple strokes along the same direction as the lines of the stamp that already gave me that guidance. The stamp lines did not really disappear like I had thought they might. I know a lot of people use distress inks when they're stamping images that are going to be used with watercolor because it disappears. And I haven't found that to be the case here, so my, my lines are still there. But now I'm going to go in and add more detail and depth into my flowers. And I'm going to start with a dark color and just really put it in there, clean off the brush, and then go in alongside the edge of it and just push that color around with my dry brush. As soon as I feel like I'm getting too much paint moving, I'll clean the brush off again so that I don't put more paint on. And the dry brush, that thirsty brush, will just pick up some of that color and start to move it around. And I just would squint at the painting as I was working and see, okay, where are the areas that I need more depth? And if you squint at it right now, you can see that flower at the bottom looks really rich and has lots of shadows in it. The one at the top, not so much. And that's a, a good test with whatever medium you're coloring with. Squint at it and see what you see. If there are areas that fully disappear, you'll be able to tell where you need to add more depth and more contrast to make it really pop. So here's the finished card, and I just absolutely love how it came out. It is totally fabulous. The die is also a die from Ellen Hudson in this new release. Um, the uh, totally is die cut out of a piece of vellum so that it sticks up off of the little piece of vellum, that little flag banner thing that I made, and the fabulous is die cut out of black shimmery cardstock and glued down. So. Here's a couple other videos, including that one that I told you about that I made the chart, and then the Anna Mason video about the background, as well as another of my Daniel Smith videos. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Be sure to click on my link down below to get to the blog hop and see lots more ideas with this release. Julie Ebersole did an amazing job on all the designs. Click the subscribe button if you have not yet, and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.